Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, Movie Thoughts. Now, I was relieved to see that this one doesn't really have just, you know, a continuous stream of failures on the parts of the protagonists, as has been the case with several recent Tom Cruise movies that I've watched. And I appreciate that this is a problem with, you know, recent action movies in general, that, you know, the, the good guys will fight fiercely and then end up actually losing where, you know, in movies from, you know, 10, 20 years ago, there wouldn't have been a fight there. It would have just cut to the chase because the, the fight, you know, slows down the plot rather than actually, you know, furthering it. But still, the Tom Cruise movies that that fell into this did so more than any other. I quite liked how Tom dealt with the Chancellor by wounding him so that, you know, so that they wouldn't be able to kill him. And then you have that thing, would Ilsa have killed him? She, she claims that she would also have wounded him, but at the end of the day, you know, you don't know that for sure. Now, and that is one, th that is the one thing where this really, or it's one of the only times in this where there's a big action scene and then at the end of it, you know, it looked like the, the good guys would win, but then the bad guys still did accomplish what they set out to do. Basically, them failing to save the Chancellor, the problem is that if you completely, if you cut the scene, or if you, if, if the scene had played out the way it would have without, if, if Ethan hadn't showed up, it would have played out essentially the same way, and that's just not a good way to do an action scene. Now, I may have, at, at first, I honestly wasn't sure why the, the, the swim thing needed to happen at the same time as the, the gate analysis thing, but it did look like, you know, that it would be, it would attract too much attention if they tried to do the two things apart. You know, it's the basic idea is that as long as they don't manage to stop either of them or discover either of them, then, you know, they the the time they spend trying to trick these people is the the least amount of time they could possibly spend. And I do quite like the the thing with her having you know, even before the, the that scene, we see her with the oxygen thing, which, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just bet that actually exists. That, that totally, yeah, why not? The, the, yeah, you know, she, we see her, you know, pop out of the water, and then we see, okay, she, she held her breath for almost two minutes, and, for that, it would have to be three, hence, she didn't do it yet, because she can't. And his mighty Tom Cruise lungs are, you know, sufficient. And the, the dude's just a thrill seeker. If, if he wasn't, like, you know, big in, in Hollywood, if he didn't have, like, a camera you know, on him for this, it would just be, you know, yeah, it, it would just be another, you know, person just doing insane thrill-seeking stuff, but anyway, and then she has to swim in and get him out, 
and then we have that thing of you know can you know can she make it and and the fact that she even jumps in tells us that you know she she took a risk by doing that and then of course you know and and then we you know right after she does that we have the entirely necessary shot of her you know from behind and then you know Benji offers her some clothes and then we see her from behind stripping the top off and just completely necessary each shot critical to the plot and then she runs off with you know she, she uses the, the defibrillator on you know on, on Benji and it's like you know it's it's rare to see that at least I haven't seen a lot of scenes in movies where the defibrillator for and, and such is is used for comical effect you know this and eraser which is trying to be funny but is actually just really disturbing and almost kinda of sad but anyway yeah, you know, she runs off with the thing, and then at the end of the day, yeah, I guess, you know, that's why she helped them in there. That's why she swam in and got Tom out, because she needed the thing. So, yeah. And I like how there are these several tests, you know, Lane keeps testing her to see if she is trustworthy. And, you know, when, when the guy sends her back and he even wipes the, the thing you know that's yeah you know but but yeah he he really does not want to to risk the the syndicate being found out now it i have to admit the moment that i you know the the when lane calls ethan and says, you know, you have to do, and when he said, by midnight tonight, I just, immediately, I hear that in the surprise Spruker's voice, you know, by midnight tonight. And I think it's interesting that the, the sleeping darts seemed, if, sometimes they would put the, the person to sleep, but if that person had lines, it would just make them sleepy and kind of suggestible <clears throat> now and yes with with Lane's call to Ethan yeah it's it's you know MI3 all over again the the bad guy calls Ethan with you know the message of get the MacGuffin or I will kill this person that you care about I quite like the the ending with you know Lane ending up inside of the glass, and then you know they they gas him, and and Ethan is staying there, smug, Tom Cruise ego stroking. I I know I know how you know if that that doesn't feel some, something like that. I know how that feels. I I do really like the ending with apparently the minister was in on it, and you know so minister welcome to the IMF, and we get that great Alec Baldwin smile, you know and. He looks like all giddy and ooh, am I a special agent now? That's that's great. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.